What is up guys, Jeffrey Gaming here and welcome to more F1 XL highlights. This is Season 8, Race 12, the Bahrain Grand Prix. Um, if you have missed any of my highlights, do remember to go check them out, especially the last race, Round 11 in Italy. Race of the season so far, so enjoyable, some amazing battles and you're going to be treated once again because... I'd say this race has got to be up there with Monza because there's just so many battles in this one as well because Bahrain, it's not a track I've ever been good at. There was one season I did dominate a race, but ever since, yeah, I've just got no pace around here. So I wasn't hopeful of like a podium or anything like that. Into qualifying, I'm currently in P10 after my soft high run, I thought. I wanted to start on the softs, but I was too far down the order, so we're going to take a chance at the super softs. Coming to the line, it is a big improvement, nearly a second up, so hopefully we can jump up the order. Coming to the line, and it's P4, so that wasn't too bad in my opinion, and that's where I ended up. I did get beaten by a soft compound runner in Crawford, who must have put in an awesome lap, but we're not that far off. And I've just seen in P5, Roman Grosjean, I think Headshot must have disconnected. And he's my closest rival to second place in the Drivers' uh, Championship. So, unfortunate for him, but obviously good for me in the uh, standings. In terms of strategy, it was tricky. I wasn't completely sure what to go for, but I think one uh, set of each compound tyres will probably be used in my strategy. I didn't really want to use the super softs, but I think in terms of qualifying, it was the way to go. So obviously it's going to be a dry race, like every race in uh, season eight so far. But I probably cursed it for that next time out. But we're getting ready for the start of the race. Five lights and. Oh, where we go. They seem to be held for a very long time. We've got a pretty even start to the cars. The headlight shocks, shocks uh, la lagging back a little bit compared to Crawford. But we're just looking for the gap. Obviously, you're going to make no contact. There's a bit of contact to the right there, but no damage or anything. So we settle in in fourth. And actually, not a lot happened for us there at the start. So we need to see if we can keep up with these cars ahead. But we've got binary just behind us. And look in the right mirror. I was absolutely crapping myself when I was turning in for that corner. Because I thought binary was going to just clatter into the side of me there. I think he must have outbroke himself. But uh, nothing too dangerous there. So there's no threat behind at the moment. And uh, I think I could have gone for the move there on light shock. I seem to be very conservative into that corner. I think most people would dive bomb at that opportunity. But I just didn't go for it in this race. But when Zygon makes a mistake out the final corner so we get a run on him we're gonna try and go for the move up the inside I mean slipstream and DRS down here is just so OP and powerful that uh, most of the action is down there so yeah prepare for a lot of uh, action into turn one late break and, and uh, that kind of thing but as uh, I fights back there um, I'm not sure if he cut the corner or something because he seemed to get quite far ahead of me but on to lap four now and oh you might have just seen in my left mirror, bullet wound nearly smashed into the back of me. I mean, what is with cars trying to scare me like this? I can't deal with it. But now, these super softs really didn't feel good at all. I was getting swallowed up by the cars behind. And you'll see here with DRS, bullet wound's going to get past. And so is binary. And I try and box binary in here behind bullet wound. And it kind of works. So I'm fighting side by side with uh, my, I, I say championship rival. He's miles ahead of me in the championship. It's clear he's probably going to win it. But uh, hopefully we have no contact. I I mean, we had no contact in Monza, which was uh, it was a big step for us. So uh, let's see if anything happens here. And I wasn't going to go for this move here. I was going for the defense to, on binary, but it kind of turned into a uh, attacking move on. I'm going to call him Justin because it's a lot easier than saying bullet wound. But uh, yeah, by this point, I decided I'm going into the pits because these tires feel absolutely awful. So I'm going down to lean. I'm effectively letting binary through here. There's no point fighting this. And I think he was actually waiting for DRS there, which kind of makes sense. But I wanted him to go past with no problem. And now we're going to use a slipstream and then just jump into the pits and put on the medium compound tire. Um, it's going to be a bit of a stretch. We're going to have to stretch these out about maybe 13, 14 laps. So I did do a bit of practice on these. I can make them last, but the pace... Oh, I was very consistent, but I wasn't sure if I was that quick because these tyres just felt very awful. And the hardest compound on most tracks don't usually feel too bad, but these just felt really slow. And who's this coming out the pits? It is Bullet, uh, Justin even. I'm going to stick to calling him that. So Justin comes out the pits. We have to give him a bit of room there, but we come out just ahead of him, which... Uh, could be important in our battle. You can see Zygons ahead of us, so it's kind of status quo. Is this status quo? Is that the same? Like the same as we were before? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do some research what that status quo actually means, but Justin's on the back of me, and it's probably going to be an easy overtake. I was trying to save fuel at this point, 
And also, didn't want to fight too hard because I've got to make these tyres last for quite a while. And I remember back in Monza, me, Justin, and my teammate Tazo were fighting all the time, and I just destroyed my tyres. So. We're on to lap 10 here, on the back of Justin, and my teammate has actually come out behind us, so just like Monza, it could be me fighting my former teammate and my current teammate, which it, it's not a bad thing because we had an amazing battle in Monza, but uh, yeah, some of the battling was so intense, I can't believe there was no contact, so Justin gets past here, uh, our defence is positioned after his mistake, but uh, yeah, I just didn't want to lose any time, and at this point I was incredibly slow, so I just let my teammate through here, I think? I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, I slow down, let him go. We should both get DRS and hopefully attack Justin, but uh, yeah, I felt like he had the best opportunity of getting us uh, bigger points at this uh, moment of time. But we do both get DRS, I'm not sure if we're going to go for a move here. I didn't want to re-overtake Taz because uh, that would kind of defeat the point of me letting him through. So this will give him the best shot of attacking Justin. Well, I say that, they did make a bit of contact up here. I'm not really sure what happened. But uh, Tazo turns left to a right-hander, which uh, is never a good thing. So it's me trying to attack Justin once again. But really, I was just trying to stay in his DRS and hopefully he'd pull me along. So we're back up to our genuine positions of 5th and 6th. So if we actually do end up fighting for 5th, I would happily take that because I know my pace around here. Even though I was predicted to get on the podium, I don't have the pace to get on the podium here. But we're fighting against Justin. We seem to have gained some confidence and gained a little bit of speed. And we get the move completed and we're back up to P5 but the top four are absolutely miles ahead of us now I think it's clear we're fighting for P5 probably between myself Justin and Taz and anyone else who wants to join this party but once again Justin overtakes me I mean we swap positions so many times in this race it's incredible and the Bahrain track is brilliant for a wheel to wheel racing as we saw with the two Mercedes in 2014 so we're in the slipstream once again it looks like we're gonna go for the move I mean, I try and control myself, like, don't fight if it's unnecessary, but this was so fun once again, just like Monza. I mean, this wheel-to-wheel -wheel action was just so good, and it gave me memories of Season 7, where I was fighting against Feynman, and I think that was one of the races, or battles of the season, or one of the best battles I've ever had. I think I dedicated a full video uh, just to the game sound, it was that good. But now Taz, I think he's trying to catch up back up to us after his slight contact with Justin. But Justin's made a mistake into the very tricky uh, left-hander there. Everyone's making mistakes down there, but we've got DRS. Are we going to go for the move? I think we are. We are close enough, and we're going to go up the inside. We'll probably get this move done, but obviously thinking to the start finish straight, Justin's going to get DRS and probably blast past us then. So, yeah, it probably wasn't the best of uh, tactical moves, but uh, let's see what happens. So Justin goes back up the inside, of course. <laughs> so many overtakes. I mean, that's going to boost the stats for the overtakes in this race. And my team is just on the back of us once again. We're going to have another three-way battle. Ah, oh, the scenes here, so are we going to go for the move on Justin once again? He does go defensive this time, so we're going to have to go for a different tact of attack. Um, tact of attack, does that even make sense? I don't know, but <laughs> um, yeah, Justin defends his position quite well there. It's tough to get the grip on the outside line through there, but uh, once again, we follow Justin off the track. That's giving me my second warning of the race, so I just need to be careful not to get a penalty. And I've done quite well in terms of not getting penalties this season, but uh, yeah, especially with the car ahead, you just follow them. If they go off the track, you tend to follow them and go off the track as well. So we don't want to do anything like that. So we go up the inside of Justin once again, lap 15. Now we're halfway through the race. We've been on these tires for quite a while. And I, at this point, I was thinking of undercuts and just strategy, how to get away from these two. Because, uh, you know, we are, if we were racing for a podium, we'd have lost so much time, it would be unbelievable. So now my teammate's coming through, he's overtaken Justin. And it looks like it could be a double overtake on me. Yes, it is. They're both flying past me. They're getting incredibly close. And we actually make a little bit of contact with uh, Justin here. And it's weird. On this game, it seems like if you make a bit of contact from behind, they kind of slow down. I'm not sure if that was Justin doing something, but uh, yeah, that was a bit weird. But um, yeah, we're down to seventh now, and you can see a couple of cars are actually catching up to this train. And uh, Tazo 
is known quite famously in F1XL for the Tazo train, but I think in this race it's more the Renault train because I was slow, I was holding everyone up and uh, you can see a couple of cars are joining the party on the minimap, but this time it's a bit of banana on banana action once again, as I mentioned a few times at Monza, so I get past Taz. But now I'm lap 18, I have decided I'm going to come into the pits at the end of this lap. And uh, because I don't have a mic on when I race, it's a bit tricky with my teammates. I didn't want him to pit at the same time, so I let him pass on purpose. And then at the uh, coming on to the start finish straight, I swerved to the right just to indicate that I'm coming into the pits. So hopefully he doesn't, at the last second, swipe into the pits in front of me. But uh, luckily that didn't happen. So now we're going to go for 11 laps on the soft compound tyres, the mandatory tyre of the race. I've learnt, finally learned that rule. I mean, it's probably the most simple rule, but I just didn't know uh, about checking it before the race. So, yeah, this could be a bit of a stretch on these compounded tyres. I did about five laps and I wasn't completely confident on them, but we've come out ahead of Justin, which is important. And there's a bit of a gap now, I think about three seconds, so that's going to help us out. And of course, a couple of laps later, Taz comes out just behind me, or maybe alongside me. I'm maybe gave him a little bit too much room there which cost me time but it looks like I'm going to be battling my teammate once again and I repeat what we talked about before Monza don't fight too hard or we'll cost each other too much time well we've completely ignored that and we keep battling each other as Taz goes flying up my inside this is, for me, this was reminiscent of Mercedes in 2014. The battling was incredible. And we were performing similar moves to the two Mercedes drivers, so it was amazing to be involved in. And I'll say it now, there was no contact between us once again. So me, Taz and Justin, the respect between us on the track. If you have it there, you can have amazing racing. So that's good to see in League 2 between us. And Taz gets the better of me now. And once again, I felt like I could have thrown it up the inside, but I just really didn't have confidence with that move. And once again, it's Taz in 7th, me in 8th, Justin in ninth. but Moo Canix has actually gone involved in the battle. So, yeah, it could be a four-way battle. Let's see how that ends up. But we go up the inside of Taz, fighting back. We want to be getting our fifth position because Kane ahead of us, I think, has another pit stop to make. Otherwise, he's uh, performed some tactical genius to get ahead of us. And I kind of swipe across my teammate there just to give a bit of a statement. But I think he's still there. Going for the move. Is he going to go up the inside? No doubt he is. And are we going to hang around the outside to defend our position? Very tricky. I just don't seem to have the grip on that outside like some of the other drivers do. But uh, here, oh, around the outside, I thought we might make contact there, but we surprisingly didn't. I'm surprised I got that move done and we defend our position. But luckily for me, Moo Kanix got involved and that helped me out no end because he was starting to battle with Taz and Justin. And you can see just behind us, some side-by-side -side action between them. And they were holding each other up, which gave me some breathing space because out of everyone, Justin obviously had the oldest tyres, but mine were only a lap younger and were about two or three laps older than the other drivers, so that really helped me out and it gave me a buffer. And now I've got Fruit Loops, who always loves a mention in these videos. That's the only reason he races, just to get into my highlight packages. So uh, Fruit Loops is going for the move here. I knew we had a penalty. My engineer kept telling me over and over again which was pretty annoying, but uh, he's going for it here, and I don't fight too hard, I know he wants to say that that was an, an incredible overtake, but my tyres were wrecked, and I knew we had a penalty, so I didn't defend too hard, there's not too uh, much point doing that, but fair play to him, it was a good move, and look at this, disrespectful driving, weaving in front of me, like dancing in the highlights, who's he think he is? And he's, he's probably going to be all over the comments section now, uh, talking about his overtaking move and weaving uh, antics. But we're coming to the line. It's P5 overall. He did indeed have a penalty. And what an incredible race that was once again. Crawford takes the victory. His second in a row, I think. So he could be a bit of a threat looking into the future. Binary second. Light Shock, who's a new guy to the league, getting his uh, first points finish. And it's on the podium. So good job from him. And we actually nearly beat Zygon through penalties. So a little bit unlucky there. My teammate, down in eighth, he had a couple of penalties. But we look at the driver standings. I think the championship is a bit sewn up, so it's basically defending our second position. Lucky, luckily for us, headshot uh, didn't get any points there. Zygon got a few points, but Crawford could be one to look out for. Though I have, is that a 70-point lead over him? Something like that. So yeah, we're very consistent. We actually have finished every single race. I say that I'm probably going to retire next time out. So if you have enjoyed these highlights, please do leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time out. Goodbye.